Hi, and welcome to Nadia and Rob and our series on our effervescent lifestyle. So today we're going to see the unboxing and assembly of our carbonation system. And you may note that in the video, the kitchen looks a little different than it does now because we got this carbonation system a little while back. And then in the meantime, we renovated our kitchen. So this is the second in our series on our effervescent lifestyle. First one will be linked up here. And in that one, we discuss sort of our effervescent journey, why we got into carbonating water and how we got a sort of tabletop unit, weren't too satisfied with it and decided to sort of step up to what you're going to see today. And really we had two reasons for doing this. First off, this is much more efficient in terms of economics. The cost is way less per liter or whatever you want to calculate of carbonated water. But actually more important to us is this unit allows us to carbonate absolutely anything. So we can carbonate, we've done water, we've done various teas, iced teas, I love carbonating coffee and espresso, cocktails, all kinds of interesting things. And we'll show those in future videos in this series. So today is unboxing and assembly and enjoy. Hi. Ah. Rob here from Rob and Nadia, and we just picked up our new um, carbonation setup, uh, which we ordered from a company here in Ontario called Ontario Beer Kegs. And they have like a complete kit for um, carbonating water, right? So it's a total kit. You have everything you need, plus the gas cylinder. We got a five pound cylinder and we just got back from the place to fill the cylinder. Uh, there's a place called Dry Ice and Gases. You can look up online wherever you are, um, dry ice gases or welding gases or CO2. You'll find lots of suppliers that can fill up a five pound tank. And uh, we'll talk about the, the money in a minute. At any rate, I want to see what's in here and uh, show you. So basically this kit is instead of buying some sort of like home carbonation like um, Soda Mystic or the Soda Streams, this is your sort of heavy duty alternative for those who are tired of spending $24 every week to get more CO2. So here we are. This is the real master thing here. Ah, this is a five pound cylinder of CO2. So five pounds of CO2, as opposed to I think around 400 grams for the soda stream. So this is gonna last you a little while. So this just got filled up, right? Filling this puppy cost about $24 Canadian. So for the price of one of those little soda stream cylinders, you fill up this whole baby. So. Then the other piece that comes in here is this. I gotta throw this away. We'll recycle that later. So here is your regulator. Now the regulator has two gauges on it. One gauge is the one that has the red and green marks on it. Right, and this tells you how much pressure is in the tank. And it's in um, like two, it goes up to 2000 PSI. Now this tank is probably pressurized to around 1000 PSI, which obviously you can't put into your Coke bottle, right? So this regulator allows you to set the pressure that goes into the bottle and it goes up to 60 PSI and you want to use bottles that were designed for carbonated stuff, carbonated water, Coca-Cola, people use those bottles. Um, I like the shape of the, um, uh, the Italian water bottle you'll see. Um, at any rate, 
any bottle that was designed for carbonated drinks um, will work fine with this. And this system is all designed to go on those. So they're good for, I think, over 100 PSI. So this regulator, which goes up to 60, gives you plenty of carbonation, way more than a soda stream, which I think carbonates to around 15 PSI. So this has a little gasket attached to it. There we go. Ah, okay. Now we have the hose and this will connect this tank or this will go onto the tank. This will connect the tank and the regulator to bum -ba -da -bum, these two devices. Ripping and tearing. There we go. So this is what's called a Becker ball connect, disconnect. And it, connects to this device, and this goes onto your pop bottle. This thread's on there, this connects to this, and the gas flows from here into your bottle, CO2 goes in to your water, and you've got carbonated water. We'll show you how in a minute. So, that's everything that comes in. You've got a little connector here. So, they've, um, Ontario beer kegs, OBK, um, and I'll include link in my, a link to them in my notes. Uh, they've put this whole kit together and the kit itself all told is now they can't ship uh, CO2 cylinders with CO2 in it, but the cylinder, the regulator, everything, and it's all brand new comes to $203. Right? And then $24 to fill up the cylinder. So uh, I know soda streams are in the $100 to $150 range. So this is a little bit more expensive to start. But as soon as you start running out of soda streams and having to recharge them at $24 or $25 per little teeny cylinder, you're going to rack up savings very, very quickly. So. That's this kit. Let's look at how we put it together. Ah. So here's how all of this goes together. And I know um, when, I, when I initially bought my system, I didn't realize that there was a company that had this all together. So I had to like figure out, well, what regulator do I need? And there's a huge range of stuff. So what's nice is uh, Ontario Beer Cakes has put this system together and you get all the pieces you need. So you don't have to try and figure it out. And as I say, I'll have a link to their, to this system down uh, in my, in the, uh, ah, the video information. So you can just order directly from them. They ship to Canada and the US. So this just opens up. And basically this goes on the beer keg and it has a built-in washer so you don't need to put ring washers or anything on there and it's very very simple to put on you just thread this on like that simple simple and you don't need to like super super tighten it just enough to Bang, bang. Okay, that's tight enough. Just enough to close the washer so it doesn't leak gas. All right, so this will thread on here. And this, this comes with the, the little pivoting uh, device all attached to the tube, all nicely put together for you. So this just threads on. And I think this is where this little baby goes. This little plastic washer goes in here, and then this goes on, threads on. There's a, oh, I'll show you, there's a valve on this. 
This just threads on. And these are meant to be just past finger tight. So I just finger tightened it and just bink, that's enough. Okay, so cylinder, regulator, peel the little covers off the regulator, and then the hose. This is a cutoff valve, so you can control whether this flows out or not. When it's up, it's turned off. So now this is like totally safe and closed. So now, this little piece here is our connector for the other end of the hose. Very simple. So the little barbed piece goes into this little rotating fitting. And then you have a little clamp collar, which I always forget to put the clamp collar on before I put the piece onto the hose. So first thing you want to do is put the clamp collar on the hose. And this is hose designed specifically for uh, beverage gas. It's good quality hose. And then this just slides on here. And I think it's probably easier to just put this on because that, that way it's easier to, that makes it easier to push into the hose. There we go. That goes up there. Then the little collar goes on there. And then a flathead screwdriver, or if you have a little socket wrench, you can do the same thing. That just tightens this up. That's that. And now your whole system is completely assembled. Three tools, a couple of minutes, all put together. This piece is all here. It has a rubber gasket that will press up against the bottle. This piece fits with this. You just pull back on the collar on this little Becker adapter. This slides in and that's attached, right? And this stuff is all beer making standard stuff. So it's available everywhere. And this company ships uh, throughout Canada and the US. And I'm just gonna slightly tighten this again, just a little bit of a twist on this to tighten that up so it doesn't leak any gas. Okay, so now we're all set up. I bet you probably would like to know how to carbonate water. So now you're probably wondering how to go about actually using this to carbonate water. So, um, oh, first thing to know, or two things to know, carbonation is a combination of like three factors, like how much carbonation you get will be controlled by three factors. The amount of pressure that goes in. Now, as I said, your um, soda stream machines, I believe pressurize about 15. I like a lot of bubbles. Right? If I'm going to drink bubbly water, I want to drink really bubbly water. So I dial this up to around 50 PSI. I know some people like to go even higher. I find 50 seems to work for me. And then the other factors are the colder your liquid is, the more CO2 it will absorb. Right? So what I like to do is I fill up a bottle of um, water and I just use regular old tap water, and I stick it in the freezer for about an hour or so, right? I've, <laughs> I've frozen a couple of bottles by forgetting that I had them in the freezer, right? But generally I stick them in for around an hour or so, and that drops the temperature around to just above freezing. And uh, then the other factor is how much surface area there is exposed to the gas. So if you just, have the bottle sitting there, you have a little disc like this big of water in the bottle. But if you shake it, you get a lot more gas in because now all of a sudden you're pushing the bubbles through the liquid and that carbonates way more. So let's go carbonate a bottle. So here we are. I'm gonna go get one. So here's a nice cool bottle of water. Now most people I know um, just Keep the, keep the water in the fridge. If you get it down to fridge temperature, that's probably plenty. I'm a fanatic, so I stick it in the freezer. 
but if you don't pull it out in about an hour and a half, it'll start to freeze solid. That's a bit of a pain. So I have, this is the, the cap that came with the bottle. Um, so I'm just gonna take that off and replace it with this carbonation cap. So this carbonation cap has a washer in it that will seal to this bottle. These are designed to fit standard pop bottles, right? So this goes on. Now, I leave a bit of an air gap. Actually, I leave a little bit more than this, but it doesn't matter. But what you want to do is get the air out because this is O2, car this is um, oxygen, and you that basically blocks the carbonation from getting in. So as you're putting this on, as you tighten it up, I just squeeze the bottle a little bit to get rid of some of the, o the oxygen that's in there, the air, and just tighten that down. And this doesn't have to be like super tight. That seems to seal really, really well. Now, some people recommend that you do this slow and easy, right? I like the pop, <laughs> frankly. So what I do, is um, I have the tank on. So I've opened the tank, right? Nothing's happened. Now this is a safety valve, right? Now you can keep this closed. Now what a lot of people do, and they sort of recommend doing this, and it's probably safer, is keep this closed, adjust your pressure, your outflow pressure, then assemble everything, and then let the gas flow. So I'm gonna show that since it's you know, you don't, because what I do is I just pop the cap on and it goes poof, right? Maybe not the safest method. At any rate, right now, this top right uh, um, uh, came and I'm seeing it's at around 40 PSI. So I'm just going to, to adjust this, you just pull the red cap out, right? And then dial it to the right to increase the pressure so I'm going to dial this up to 50. Where am I? Oh, it was at 30, so I'm going up to, uh, look, yeah, right around 50 PSI. And then to lock that in, you just press the cap back in, All right? So now my regulator is set and I just pop this on. I pull back on the little collar, knock that on and then release the pressure valve. And you can see this is now rock hard. And like I say, you want to increase the surface of your bottle, so you shake it. And if you turn it a little upside down, you can see the bubbles flowing in. There we go. And you can actually hear a little Now, I like to just hold on to the, the end of this like that so that I'm not flexing this cord and it, there's a potential it could create a little leak. So I just hold this. You can hear the, the tank is ringing just a little bit as the gas flows out of it. And you can let this flow in and you can see it's still more and more carbonation. And what the people who are really expert at this recommend is that you carbonate a little bit, then pop this off, right? Then release that carbonation. Let the gas come out slowly, right? And then squeeze the air out again and do one more carbonation, because that will just get the maximum carbonation in there. Oops. There we go. And as you can see, there's, I mean, it's already, the, carbon, the carbonation is already refilling the bottle. So I just pop that on, give it a little more shake. And that's it. You now have carbonated water. You want to see? Hold on. Open up the water. Yeah. 
let the carbonation come out slowly because you don't want this steel cap popping off across the room. This isn't a champagne cork. And pour that. And you can see beautifully bubbly water. Tastes great, nice high level of carbonation. Now, what I tend to do because I like, now if you, you can now, if you want, put the regular cap on, stick this in the fridge, just like you would a regular soda bottle. But you know from experience that if you buy carbonated water or soda and you pour out part of it and then you stick it back in the fridge, it starts to lose its carbonation. So what I like to do, and this is something that I observed at uh, Dave Arnold's bar, is I like to take my cap, put it back on, evacuate the air, and just pop it back on, recarbonate it a little bit, because I like to keep my carbonation. And this is, and that's it. Now, just as one other little precaution, when I'm done and I'm gonna put this away or slide it under my counter, wherever, I just turn off the valve here. That way, if somehow I develop a leak in a hose or something, if this is off, no gas is going anywhere, so I'm not gonna lose gas from that. So now you have your carbonated water, which is delicious. Your bottle of carbonated water into the fridge. It'll be just as carbonated when you pull it out the next time. So enjoy the effervescent lifestyle. And in some future videos, we'll talk about other things that you can, because this system, you can carbonate virtually anything you want. So I'm going to talk about some of my favorite things to carbonate and we'll come up with some interesting ideas to explore so you can fully enjoy the effervescent lifestyle. Bye-bye.